Live from ClickOrlando.com, News 6 Plus, and WKMG, we're getting results in your neighborhood now at 6.30 p.m. Now at 6.30, an Orlando commissioner had nothing to say as she walked out of jail, but prosecutors spoke up how they say Regina Hill took advantage of a 96-year-old woman she represents. Good evening. This is News 6 at 6.30 getting results. Thanks for joining us here live on News 6 Plus. I'm Justin Mormon. And I'm Ginger Gadsden. Well, we thought bad weather would delay today's final flight of the Delta IV Heavy, but that was not what kept the powerful rocket from taking flight today. The reason the launch was scrubbed and when they will try again. And it is one of the top trending stories on ClickOrlando.com. The ruins of an abandoned bank vault found in what looks like a vacant field. The history behind it and an entire ghost town in just minutes. But now at 6.30, we do want to start with team coverage on an arrest a year in the making. That is the mugshot of Orlando City Commissioner Regina Hill. We learned early today she turned herself in on seven charges, including elderly exploitation and mortgage fraud. We first told you last week a lawsuit accuses Hill of taking more than $100,000 from a 96-year-old. When she appeared before a judge here, she was given strict orders not to contact that woman. News 6 was there as Hill walked out of jail just a short time after posting a $40,000 bond. News 6 investigator Eric Sandoval first told us about the accusations, and tonight he kicks off our team coverage with a look at the charges. This is the mugshot of Orlando City Commissioner Regina Hill. It was taken soon after she turned herself into the Florida Department of Law Enforcement early this morning after being indicted on seven charges. We're here to discuss uh, the arrest of Regina Hill. During a press conference in downtown Orlando today, FDLE investigators said that they had been looking into allegations against Hill for more than a year. Mrs. Hill effectively betrayed the trust of her community by taking advantage of a 96-year-old elderly citizen, which is one of the most vulnerable in that community. Investigators accused Hill of fraudulently obtaining a mortgage to purchase this house in the elderly woman's name. They also accused her of using the woman's money to buy expensive things for herself. Hill repeatedly used the victim's finances to purchase rental cars, hotel stays, personal luxury items such as, such as expensive bottles of perfume from high-end retailers, clothing, and paying her own personal bills. Your name, ma'am? Um, Regina I. Hill. Hill made her first appearance from jail this morning, where she had already posted her $40,000 bond and was waiting to leave. The judge put tight restrictions on her, though, telling her to stay away from the elderly woman and her finances. Now, investigators say Hill's son and his girlfriend lived in this house for a while. They moved out later on. It's vacant now. Something else we learned today that is Hill is convicted of all seven of these charges. She faces a maximum of 180 years behind bars. In Orlando, Eric Sandoval getting results, News 6. Now the other piece of all of this is the community Commissioner Hill serves. Orlando District 5 includes the historic Paramore neighborhood, and she has been a champion for it since she first ran for office in 2014. She was elected despite a string of arrests for drugs, DUI, and passing bad checks. So will she stay in office? Our team coverage continues with News 6's Catherine Silver at Orlando City Hall. Different reactions in District 5 after Commissioner Regina Hill was arrested. She's had so much hurt, has overcome so much in her life, the death of her daughter, drug addiction, and to see her reach a certain level of status and success and to end up in jail, uh, my heart just goes out to her. Jared Blackshear is a local pastor. We saw his posts online and met in person to hear his opinion. I believe that Commissioner Hill has done a lot for the city of Orlando, whatever this is, we support her healing, even if we don't support her actions. What was your reaction when you heard this news? It didn't really come as a surprise to me. David Stone told us elected officials should be held accountable. I'm caring for someone elder than my family right now, and they're just open to be exploited. And for someone who we trusted to be in that position, to exploit that is quite disturbing. So what stance are city leaders taking? We asked them and we didn't get a strong response. In fact, most didn't respond to us at all. 
We did get an email from a city spokesperson, a short sentence. We do not have the authority to discipline an elected official, including suspending them from office, as that power lies with the governor. That is true. Here's what he had to say when he was asked about these allegations the day before Hill's arrest. I would assume that's what's going to happen. We'll have to see if this happens, what the indictment looks like, but that's typically what we've done in these cases. Florida's constitution does give the governor the power to remove an elected official from office on several grounds. If Hill is suspended and her seat in District 5 is open, there would need to be a special election to fill it. The city's charter gives them 45 days to coordinate with the supervisor of elections and fill that seat, but the governor would need to suspend Hill before any of that happens. I did reach out to his office again to ask about an executive order. I was told they will let me know if and when he decides to act. In Orlando, I'm Catherine Silver, getting results, News 6. For a look back at Commissioner Hill's past and an in-depth report on the lawsuit against her, head to clickorlando.com and click the story at the top of the homepage. Tonight, a $15 million plus plan to get results and help prevent a problem made worse by Hurricane Ian. People living in Port Orange remember the flooding here from the 2022 storm. They say with climate change, this is a growing concern. News 6's Molly Reed looks at how the city's wastewater plant played a role after Ian and the plan aimed at getting results. This is one of the two generators here that will be replaced as part of this project here in Port Orange at the wastewater treatment facility. It went down during Hurricane Ian in 2022, causing even more problems on top of the catastrophic flooding here. The project is gonna help get those electrical components up and out of the flood zone or the floodplain so that they will continue to operate even through the uh, extreme events of flooding. The city's engineer Juno Reed showed me the filters and emergency generators they will replace with the $15 million from the state. The site may flood, but all the pumps and power will continue to operate as normal. That's not what happened in 2022 during Hurricane Ian. Of our lift stations that pump the wastewater to the wastewater plant um, were not operational because of power loss. Reed says right now they're working with emergency backup generators and these upgrades will ensure that doesn't happen again. We don't want to have overflows of wastewater that can affect the, the surrounding environment. Now that project over at the wastewater treatment facility where we just were is just one of several projects the city of Port Orange is doing to try and solve any flooding issues after Ian. Now this is Rogers Place here. You can see there's quite a bit of flooding in the roads just after this morning's rain. I talked to the residents around here who tell me this is an issue they see all too often. We're headed up to here. Stephen Slack lives a block away from the Halifax River. He says they are seeing more extreme high tides from the river in recent years, and that water needs a place to go. It's going to flow in and keep flowing in until it starts going back out. The city is also now lining thousands of feet of stormwater pipes and upgrading its lift and pump stations in the city to help with drainage. All of these projects going hand in hand, the city tells me, to make sure that in the case of another major rain event, they will be much more prepared. In Port Orange, Volusia County, I'm Molly Reed getting results, News 6. The end of an era on the Space Coast will have to wait another day. This is Delta Mission Control. It's confirmed that we will not continue with the NROL 70 launch activities today. We have a 24-hour recycle. That was the word from United Launch Alliance as they scrubbed today's 16th and final launch of the Delta IV Heavy. The launch was scrubbed ju with just minutes left in the liftoff. New Six's James Barbero is at the Cape with the reason why and when they plan to try it again. So the history books aren't closed yet on the Delta IV Heavy. It was going to be its 16th and final launch here at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. But now United Launch Alliance will try again on Friday. And all week we've been telling you it was only a 30% chance of favorable weather conditions anyway, so it looked like the launch was unlikely to happen. Delta IV Heavy, as we've been telling you this week, it doesn't just end one particular rocket, it ends a family of rockets. The Delta I rocket dates back to the early 1960s, followed by the Delta II and the Delta III. And I was here five years ago when we watched the last Delta IV medium launch. United Launch Alliance is comfortable ending the program because it now has its new Vulcan Centaur rocket, which got off the ground back in January. The Vulcan will not only replace the Delta rockets, but ultimately the Atlas V rocket as well. 
and today it wasn't actually the weather that scrubbed the launch. ULA says it was a technical issue that popped up in the last few minutes of the countdown. Tomorrow's weather forecast improves to 60% favorable for a launch. The new launch time tomorrow afternoon is at 1.37. At Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, I'm James Sparvero, getting results News 6. And the Delta IV Heavy launch has been one of the top trending stories on ClickOrlando.com all day today. Not just whether it was going to launch, but many of you are curious about the history of the Delta series. Yeah, it's fascinating. And our second top trending story features one of the hottest up-and-coming sports. Oh, yeah. And maybe not the most expected place, but it, it makes sense. All right, so the headline construction underway on 40,000 square foot pickleball facility in the villages. And it's not just any old place to play pickleball. News 6 producer Bree White learned the pickleball club has chosen the villages for its next membership-based high amenity indoor pickleball facility. What does it mean? It means there you got a lot going on there. <laughs> 40,000 square feet of pickleball courts, a pro shop, lounge, cafe, wow. and a couple of bocce ball courts. On, you know, and then they have all the golf courses as well Everything, in the villages. Yeah. So as you can see, construction's underway on Northeast 62nd Terrace near Saddlebrook Executive Golf Course. It should open this fall. That looks fascinating. Yeah. Okay, so Bree White will keep us up to date on all things pickleball. Her What's the Dill newsletter can be sent right to your inbox every two weeks. It's my favorite name for a newsletter. To sign up, just head to clickorlando.com slash newsletter. Our third top trending story is somewhat of a mystery. The headline, an abandoned bank vault sits in the woods in Seminole County. Why is it there? <laughs> no surprise, though. ClickOrlando.com and News 6 digital producer Anthony Talcott uncovered this story. All right, so, Tony, where did this vault come from? Well, Ginger, Justin, to visit the vault, you need to take a trek out to what's left of a ghost town of the rural patch of Seminole County. Now, that vault dates back to the early 1900s. Hmm. A local historian, Jason Byrne, says that the area used to be a town called Osceola, no connection to Osceola County, and is built along the St. John's River north of Lake Harney. But the ruin of that abandoned vault is about all there is left of that town. The area was originally known as Cook's Ferry until a lumber firm called the Osceola Cypress Company built both a giant sawmill and the town of Osceola in 1916 to help support its operations. Now, the company and the town were named after a famous Seminole warrior, and the current owner of the property told me he's got no plans to get rid of this relic. Jim Buckley has even found artifacts in the property, including several old glass bottles that stem back from the 1900s. Did he find any money, though? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but he's telling me an old glass Coca-Cola bottle he found mm. might be worth a few hundred. Oh, oh wow, okay. Yeah, so. Now that vault and what's left of the town of Osceola are both located in the middle of a fenced-in private area. It's along the 2500 block of Osceola Road in Geneva. Now you can see it while going around that sharp bend in the road. As to why the place is abandoned, that's pure economics. The company ran out of lumber to mill, so they packed up, went south, and didn't just take their mill with them. They took nearly the entire town, too. <laughs> How do you move a whole town? <laughs> oh, well, they put the town there to begin with to help them support their operations. Yeah. They had schools, a bank, obviously. They had a bunch of stores. There was a whole thing there. It looks rather haunted to me. No, it does. It reminds <laughs> me of any time there is a YouTube story on what are these stairs to nowhere right. in the woods? I always click on oh, those, yeah. and that's what that looks like I mean, to me. I mean, Tony gave us the directions <laughs> on how to get there, but I have no interest in going. No, and I'm no, just re I'll just read the story, and that's all. Yeah. Did you go alone, though? <laughs> Oh, yep. Went alone. Uh, <laughs> went there, and the homeowner just happened to be outside, and he uh -oh. took me around on his golf cart. It is pretty cool. I love a, I love a little piece of old Florida, and that certainly is. Oh, that's Florida. for sure. Yeah, yeah, but you wouldn't think that's a bank vault. Yeah, no. no just driving by it, you wouldn't think so. But no, going not inside, at all. It's all right, the next spacious. time you go out there alone, you wear an air tag or something so we know how to find <laughs> you in case you get lost. That's well, pretty I'll do cool. my best. All right. Now, yeah, you can good. find the full story on ClickOrlando.com, along with all of our other top trending stories. Ginger, Justin. Always good. <laughs> Always good stuff from Anthony. Thank you so much for breaking that down and for doing the story and, you yeah, know, I mean, risking the chance there, of yeah. seeing some ghosts. So good stuff. Yeah, well, thank you, guys. Absolutely. Well, another story that's sure to be trending pretty soon. Seems Trooper Steve met a special friend while out on patrol today. I'm so jealous. A furry friend who needs a forever home, but not just any home. Oh, look at you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hopefully... This guy won't be here in a couple of days, right? Because he's going to be at my house. <laughs> Ahead on News 6 at 6.30, why Reginald and dogs like him are not right for every family. What you'll need to give in addition to love, food, and of course, water.
I absolutely love his name, mm -hmm. Reginald. That's Reginald. adorable. Well, the cold front is moving out and cooler air is moving in. I'll show you just how cool it's going to get tonight, tomorrow, and then what to expect as we head into the Easter holiday. First, though, you may have seen this going around social media. A woman lost hundreds of dollars clicking a link she was sent on Facebook Messenger. Investigator Lewis Bolden worked with the Secret Service, and he'll tell you how this happened and what to look out for next. You're watching News 6 at 630 live on News 6 Plus. We're getting results in Palm Coast, Lady Lake, and all of Central Florida. We'll be right back. Brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Now at 6.30, a woman says she lost hundreds of dollars after she clicked a link in her Facebook Messenger. This is a picture of that message you're about to see. And you might have even seen something similar on your social media feeds as well. She said she didn't understand how it happened and came to News 6 investigator Lewis Bolden for help. So she met Lewis when News 6 hit the road for the zip code 32825. That's in East Orange County. Lewis turned to the Secret Service for help so you can know what to watch out for. Oh, I was afraid. I was very afraid. When Dawn Church got this link saying, look who died, that appeared to be coming from her son on Facebook Messenger, she initially hesitated. So I thought, well, this looks a little funny. But she clicked it anyway. I unsuspectingly trusted it because, hey, it's from Sam. My phone kind of like blew up. You know, it was doing funny things and, you know, going between applications. She says she already knew something was wrong. But then she got a phone call from a close friend. He said, hey, I just got a message from you that said you sent me $700. It was a mistake. Could you send me the money right back? There was one problem. Church had not sent a message, but when she checked her bank account, $700 was gone. She believes by way of her debit card that was attached to the wallet on her phone, and when her friend tried to send the money back, he lost too. Money got deleted from my account, 
but the money that he sent to me never came into my account. So you're out of $700 and he's out of $700. Exactly. Yeah, that's what's so scary about this. How often are phones like hijacked like this? More than you would ever imagine. Caroline O'Brien Buster is the special agent in charge with the U.S. Secret Service Orlando Field Office. Even if it's coming from somebody that you know, you need to be very, very cautious with the link that you're clicking on. Church handed over her phone to Fred Sanks, a network intrusion analyst with the Secret Service. He's analyzing it to make sure the bad guys had not left malware on it. They've usually taken hours and hours to build a piece of malicious code that they, once it's on your phone, it's, it's programmed to do things automatically. I'm gonna go out and look for these files, I'm gonna look for these, these accounts, look for these apps. If you accidentally click a link you're not familiar with, he says the first thing to do is contact your bank, then change your passwords. Church contacted her bank who told her her account had been compromised and advised her to close the account, which she did. People can get into your phone and take your money, take your information and do nefarious things with it. Church says her bank refunded the money temporarily, but later took the money back because they considered it a scam. The Secret Service says if it happens to you, another option is to wipe your phone by resetting it to the factory settings, but make sure you have everything you need backed up somewhere. Otherwise, you'll lose it. Getting results, I'm Lewis Bolden, News 6. It really is. Every time I see those stories, it really is so scary because it's like that. It could happen to anyone. It really could. Well, they laced up their shoes on a mission to get results and do some good for local kids battling serious illnesses. Yeah, Make-A-Wish of Central and Northern Florida is holding their annual Walk for Wishes tonight at Lake Eola. It got underway just a few minutes ago. Now, donations from the event will go to Grant Wishes. News 6 producer Tom Veilkind knows firsthand how the charity gets results. He was diagnosed with leukemia when he was a teen. Tom was a guest today on Breakfast with Bridget, and he talked about his wish to go to the Pro Bowl in Hawaii. Tom said in his mind that trip goes hand in hand with his journey with cancer. He can't think of one without the other. And it was actually funny because my last day of IV chemo was January 31st of 2014. That game was played on January 31st of 2016. So two years to the mm. day after I had my central line removed, I was sitting at a Pro Bowl stadium oh. in Hawaii watching the game. We're so happy that Tom is here with us. No, um, I couldn't he say also better. told Bridget about a heartfelt memory from that wish, a picture he will carry with him for the rest of his life. One of those photos is with a former Kansas City Chiefs player who the season before was diagnosed with lymphoma mm. and played throughout the season. Um, it's actually this, uh, not this, this one right here. Mm. And so after we took this photo, that's, the, that's his jersey. He signed it for me. I told him my story and how he inspired me to push through wow. and play high school football. And he, he said that was incredible. Um, and then as before I could walk away, he took out, he got his camera from someone and they, he took a picture on his camera with me. Oh, oh man. That, I, I know. That right? gives you it's, chills. It really does. That's so awesome. And while it is too late to take part in tonight's walk, Make-A-Wish also accepts other kinds of donation, including flight miles. You will find that info inside this story on the homepage of ClickOrlando.com. Mm. I'm so happy that he's sharing his story. He shared it before, and the first mm -hmm. time he shared it, I had no idea. And it just goes to show you, you don't know the journey people <laughs> are on or that they have been on. You Absolutely. Know? And he... He really is. We, we, I just want to echo that thought that we really are lucky to have him. He's so talented and his story is incredible as well. And yeah. he ran out of the building tonight. I heard him right after he got done with the 530 yeah. newscast. That's what the show he produces. And he's like, I got to go to Lake Yola. I'm hitting Lake Yola. <laughs> he's so doing it, yeah. We're so proud that he right. is a member of the New Great 16. Great job, Tom. Well, Trooper Steve and Orange County Animal Services hope someone can get results for a special and loving dog. Steve went on patrol today to the shelter and he met Reginald, an adorable <laughs> five-year-old German shepherd. Reginald has been there for a few months now, in part because a dog his size has needs. A dog this size and with this level of strength, and he's young and very, very, very energetic. Right. Obviously, even if you have an apartment, even if you have a smaller place, that's fine as long as you're putting in the room. Dogs like this need long works, 
they actually need a job. They need to know they're doing something. Right. So a lot of heavy training, you know, teaching them how to send things out, uh, fetch, things like that. The more you train them for, the happier they'll be. These dogs are amazing, but they get bored very easily. Yeah, that's when the couch gets yes. torn up or a wall or something yes. like that. But it's not their fault. It's not. It's frustration. Right. And a lot of times, something as simple as a long walk in the morning, a long walk at night, can go a long way. It's good for us, too, by it the really way, because I love my walks at night. And then it's like, all right, we're both ready for bed kind of thing. So Reginald is going to be here at Orange County Animal Services. He's like, leave me alone. <laughs> and uh, it's ready to go home. Uh, just keep in mind, we're looking for a bigger property, someone with patience, of course, and uh, someone who's genuinely looking to welcome some uh, fur baby like this. And let me tell you, there's plenty to go around with this. <laughs> yeah, I will just tell you as someone who only had a previous experience with a little 10 pound dog mm -hmm. and now I have a 74 pound dog. It's a bit different. It really is a different mm -hmm. ball game altogether. You will lose some furniture, but it, <laughs> it's worth it. It's Get the so room worth it. going with yeah. old Reggie. I, oh I got God. a hunch that Reggie, Reginald here, <laughs> will not be at the shelter for very long. No. We do have more information. On Reginald, if you're interested in bringing him home, just head to clickorlando.com slash on patrol. But what a cutie he is. He's like a good boy. And oh, they're yeah. so smart. Sure. And they're apparently, very intelligent. Apparently, yeah. Reginald knows some commands in German as well. So oh, he yeah. has a bit of training. He's bilingual. I was looking at, you know, I, want, uh, I can't look too hard because the next thing you know, as we've all said. I know. It yeah. happens. It happens. All right. But if Reginald's going on a walk tonight... It's going to be a nice night, nice right? Nice night for it a is. walk. It is. He's going to feel the breeze flowing through all that hair. <laughs> You're going to see the that hair fur love blow it. away. Love it. <laughs> it's going to blow all around, along with the pollen. Yeah. Because, oh. you know, the pollen right now is okay. It's not too it bad. It has been better, yeah. Right. But, you know. The rain helped to dampen the pollen, mm -hmm. but... Um, yeah, as we head into the weekend, of course, even tomorrow, all of that is going to change. We are now behind a cold front that is continuing to push offshore tonight and really take a lot of that rain up the eastern seaboard through the Carolinas right now. Uh, but behind that, high pressure is going to settle in. We'll see some drier air. We're already seeing it move in and some slightly cooler temperatures. But today we got up to 79. Yesterday we got up to 84. So we've been right around 81, which is typical for this time of year. But as we head into tonight and tomorrow, cooler weather is definitely on the way. Temperatures will fall from 77 right now from our Light Orlando Delivering Hope camera to about 69 at 8 o'clock and about 66 by 9 o'clock this evening. And then it's going to get even cooler. The reason why this drier air is moving in and that's going to help eat up whatever cloud cover is left out there. So then we're going to see this area of high pressure over the northern Gulf really settle in over the state by the weekend. That's going to reinforce the dry weather. Also some warmer weather as the winds begin to veer out of the south by the end of the weekend, taking temperatures up a couple of notches, especially into next weekend uh, or next week rather. As we head into 11 o'clock tonight, clearing skies, cooler temperatures to start the day tomorrow. You may need a light jacket and then by the afternoon it shapes up nicely. Not hardly a cloud in the sky, really a few high cirrus clouds at most. It's still going to be breezy heading into tomorrow night, so we will have uh, small craft advisories as well as high rip current risks in place all the way through at least tomorrow with gradual improvement as those winds die down over the weekend. So for tonight, here are your overnight lows. A bit chilly in Ocala, the villages and Leesburg all in the lower 50s. Then you get to the I-4 corridor and we're in the mid to upper 50s, lower 60s for the Brevard County Coast and low 50s for you in Palm Coast. Here's tomorrow. Your forecast is sponsored by Florida Lottery. High temperatures will stay a bit cooler on the coastline, upper 60s to low 70s to the mid to upper 70s when you go west of I-95. Now let's get you some results and share your pinpoint accurate seven day forecast. Just a beautiful setup as we head into the Easter holiday weekend with high temperatures right around 84 and a dancing chick. Gotta love it. <laughs> On April Fool's Day, which is Monday, it's no joke. I know I've been saying this a lot, but seriously, 87 on Monday, yeah. only getting hotter by Tuesday to go up to 90. A few scattered showers with our next weather maker on midweek. We're still at 86, but then we'll see a high of 76 come Thursday. Thank you, Samara. I'm distracted by the bunny popping over the, the logo I know, there. I just love watching them. It's really cute. Ears, face. Hi. 
<laughs> All right, thank you, Samara. Well, Universal Studios Florida opened in 1990, and it promised to let guests ride the movies. Yeah, tonight we've learned Universal's newest park will let you fly with dragons and even meet a famous one up close and personal. A sneak peek at the How to Train Your Dragon Land coming up to Epic Universe. Stay with us, that's just two minutes away. Universal's newest and largest theme park is quickly taking shape near the Orange County Convention Center. Epic Universe is set to open next year. A lot of excitement with this one. Last month, we got our first look at the land at the heart of the new park. And tonight, Universal made it official. <laughs> They're going to have some dragons here. So today's fly-through animation takes us to How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke. Universal says guests will soar with dragons in this colorful world filled with Viking adventures. The attractions include a family coaster themed like a glider, hmm. as you can see, mm -hmm. a wet and wild boat battle, a flying dragon swing wow. ride, and a spectacular show with life-size dragons. Holy cow. Guests will even get to meet and even touch Toothless the dragon. I, guess, I haven't seen a dragon <laughs> in his paddock. But Sky Six was over Isle of Burke and the rest of Epic Universe today. We expect Universal to reveal some more details about another land next month. Now we know Super Nintendo World is going to be one of them. Insiders say there's also another Harry Potter land and a land based on classic monsters like Dracula, Frankenstein, and the Wolfman. Hmm. You can keep up with all attractions at clickorlando.com slash theme parks. That ride looked intense though, because you're, you're in water, you're in the air, you're, you're everywhere. I mean, they can't hide it any longer. They may as well just they mess may, up. I mean, you we can, can see, see the dragon. We, yes, we can see it from this vantage point, but you can see it from the road as well, all through that corridor. It doesn't take much. It's so. like when the volcano was being put up. <laughs> right? It's like, I wonder what's gonna be happening there. Well, Ginger said, you know, you're all over the place. No, I know exactly where I am. I'm holding the stuff. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you're for waiting everybody. for everybody to get off the ride, right? right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Not a roller coaster person, got it. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for watching. News 6 at 6.30, stream News 6 online anytime on our New 6 Plus Smart TV app. We break news on clickorlando.com. See you back here tonight after 11, after the games. See ya.